Welcome to another Excel VBA tutorial. In today's video, we are going to continue our exploration of how we can take different Excel objects and then copy them over to another application. So we've done Word, we've done PowerPoint, and now we are moving on to Outlook. So we're gonna take a single chart in our workbook right now and we're gonna copy it over to the Outlook application into an email that we create all from within Excel. Now, just a little kind of heads up, uh, compared to the other applications, we're gonna find this might be a little bit more complicated than maybe what we're used to doing. There's some more stuff that we kind of have to take into consideration and we have to work with, but you know, I'll do my best to walk through all kind of the caveats that we have to encounter uh, you know, when we're working with this particular you know, type of problem. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into Visual Basic. So we're going to go up to our Developer tab right up over here. And then we're going to go to Visual Basic. And then if you don't already, make sure to insert a module. So you're going to right click in your Project Explorer, go down to Insert, and then a module. Now I already have a module created, so I'm just going to use that one. And then before we actually get started, we have to enable some object libraries. We're pretty used to doing this. Anytime we're working with an outside application, we've got to enable that object library so that way we can declare variables and make sure everything runs smoothly from within inside our VBA editor. However, with this one, we have to actually enable two object libraries. The first one is Outlook and the second one is Word. So we're gonna go up to our tools section. So if we go up to here, right on the ribbon, we're gonna to go to tools, down to references, and then from here, I already have them enabled. I've used these libraries before, so they're already at the top and checked off, but if you've never used these libraries, you might not have them up at the top. So what you wanna do is you wanna scroll down to M for Microsoft, and then you're gonna to go to O for Outlook. So somewhere right around here, you're gonna see the Outlook library. You just wanna check that box. And then W for Word, Microsoft Word. And I think it would be somewhere right around here. So you wanna check that box. And you just wanna make sure it's the object library for both of them. So Microsoft Outlook and Microsoft Word object library. You want the boxes checked. You might see a different number here depending on what version of Office you're on. If you're on an earlier version, you're gonna have a lower number. That simply is referencing the version. Everything that we're doing today will work fine in the version that we are working in. So don't worry. Okay, and then from there we'll press okay. And now we can actually start writing our subroutine. So we're gonna say sub copy chart to Outlook. And then I'll put a little note saying single. And then we'll declare our variables. It's always a good habit to get into when we declare our variables, it makes our code a little bit easier to read and we can also leverage IntelliSense better. So the first group of variables that we are going to declare is related to Outlook. So we're gonna declare Outlook variables. The first one is the Olook app and then this one will be an Outlook.application object. So just like Excel is an application, Word is an application, PowerPoint is an application, Outlook is an application, this is a container where we will store that application. Next one is the Olook item. This is a mail item. It's basically an email. So that's the best way I take, you know, kind of describe it. It's the actual email itself. And so for that one, it's gonna be an Outlook dot, uh, not, I'm already jumping ahead. Outlook, what is it, mail item. So it's a mail item. Okay, so there's that. The next one that we wanna do is called Outlook Inspect. And then this one is an Outlook dot inspector. Okay, so with the inspector, that's the actual, that's really the window that we're inspecting our email with. And so while the mail item is the actual email, the inspector is kind of where we're inspecting this email. And so we wanna actually uh, declare an object variable where we can house our inspector because there's important information that we're gonna wanna get from that inspector. So the actual window where we're 
uh, exploring that particular mail item. And the reason why is because within inside the inspector, there's actual a word document object. So that actually is all the text and all that information that is being stored in the email. That's actually leveraging a word uh, object library. And so in order to get that kind of document, we have to go inside the inspector to get it. And so that actually leads us into our second group of variables. We're now going to declare our word variables. So like I said, inside the inspector, there is a word object model that we can leverage. And so we want to get a document from that object model and we want to get a range from that object model. So we're going to declare those variables. So we're going to declare <coughs> word variables and then I'll put something like, oh, look, doc as word document and then dim oh look range as word dot range so that's why we had to enable the word object library is because we're actually referencing word objects in our script so this is actually the first time we've had to work with two different libraries um, in the same script so you know good practice right Okay, now that we've done Word and Outlook, we're going to do our Excel variables. So declare Excel variables. And then lucky for us, there's only one. It's just a chart object. And then that is going to be a chart object within Excel. So that's the actual chart we want to copy and then move over to our Outlook email. Okay, so from there, uh, we're going to now move into the first section of our script. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try and create a new instance of Outlook. However, I'm gonna assume something differently than what I've done in the past, because I know in a lot of places, a lot of people have Outlook open in the background. So I'm gonna write the script that's gonna first try and go and fetch that Outlook application if it's already open, but if it's not open, then it's gonna create a new instance for us. So in order to do this though, we're gonna have to write it so that way if we go and fetch it and it gets an error, it will actually continue on in the script. So what we're gonna have to do is uh, we're going to have to write it in such a way that if an error encounters in our script, uh, we're going to keep going. And so how we do that is error, so not error, on error, resume next. So by using this key phrase, if we encounter an error in our script, uh, it's just going to keep going, which we want it to in this example. Most of the time you don't really want to do this. You always want to know what error you're encountering. Uh, but with this one, it will keep going and it will go into the next section for us. And so why are we doing that? Well, we're going to try and get an active instance of Outlook. So uh, what we're going to say is get the Outlook, Outlook application. So I'm going to set the O look app equal to get object brackets. And then it's going to be comma, a string, Outlook dot application. So all this line is doing is it's going to try and get that Outlook application. If it doesn't get it, we're going to get an error. And so if we get an error, create a new instance of Outlook. And so if error number is equal to 429, I think it's 429, then do something and then end our if. So the error is actually an object within um, Excel. And so all we're saying is, hey, go into our error object, get the number property. If the number property is equal to 429, then that's a particular type of error that basically is it tried getting something that I couldn't get. And so if that happens, now we know to create a new instance. But if it gets another error, then we got something else we'd have to deal with. So we're going to first clear the error that's always good to do is make sure you clear your error and so we're going to say error object and then call the clear method and then we're going to create a new instance of outlook and so we're going to set the o look app equal to a new outlook application perfect so from here everything should work fine we're going to try and get the Outlook application. If we can't, let's create a new instance. Keep in mind, I am not making this Outlook app visible and I am not bringing it to the front of the window. That is a whole different beast. There's a lot more that we have to do. It's not as simple as saying make it visible and then bring it to the front. 
there's actually a lot of stuff we have to do in the background in order to get that correct. I will demonstrate that, but that's for another video. Okay, so now that we have that, we're gonna create a reference to the chart that we wanna copy, okay? So we're gonna create a reference to the chart we want to copy. And so all we're gonna do is say set that chart object equal to the active sheet that we are on in our workbook. We're gonna go into our chart objects and then we're gonna use the index method to get the first chart on our worksheet. So if you go back here into our worksheet, you have two charts. I want the first chart. Well, the index is determined by the order in which they were created. So this was the first one created. This was the second one created. So this has an index of one. This has an index of two. So I'm gonna pass through an index of one. Alrighty. So that takes care of that. We've got our chart object. And what we can do is copy it. I write it like this usually, but sometimes this does run into problems for stability issues. So if you wanna make sure, if you wanna make it really stable, what you can do is you can go into the chart property of our chart object and then the chart area of our chart and then we can call the copy method. So this tends to be the more stable method. It's a little bit longer, but if you're really concerned for, you know, about stability issues, then simply write it like this. Okay. So now that we've done that, we're going to create a new email. So we're going to create a new email. So I'm going to set my Olook item equal to my Olook app dot create item. And then there's a lot of different items in Outlook. There's just, you know, not mail items. There's journal items, contact items, mobile notes, post tasks, a lot of different items. So you can actually create a lot of different stuff from within Excel. In our example, we want a mail item. So we're going to select this one, double click it and close our brackets. So now we have a new email created. So now that we have this object, we can now work with this particular object. And I want to work with this particular object and work with some properties and methods that are related to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say with the Olook item. I'm going to close it off with my end with. I'm going to put it down so you can see a little bit more. And then there's a couple pieces of information I want to define about my email. So I'm going to define some basic info about my email. The first one is who am I sending it to? Well, I got a fake email here that I'm going to use. And I'm going to say XYZ at anc.com. This has to be a string. I'm going to define the CC and I'll say that's at XYZ at abc.com and then which one subject we'll do subject next so subject so that's the actual subject line and I'll say this is my chart and then my body section so this is the actual body section of our email hi there this is my chart I made in Excel, you know, something friendly, right? Perfect. Okay. And then now that we've done that, I want to display the email. So I'm going to display the email by calling the display method. So if I run it like it is now, everything should work smoothly. Perfect. Okay. So it created a new email for us. It populated the from, well, that's by default to CC subject, and then here's my body section of it. Uh, before I go on to it, so this is technically our inspector. This is how we're inspecting our email. And then this is the content of our email. So this is the word editor object, if you want to think about it. So we need to actually reference each one of those objects because in order to paste this chart, we have to go into our word object model. So I'm going to close it out and we'll move on to the next section. <coughs> Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to get the uh, get the inspector. So get the active inspector of the email. And so what we can do is we can just simply set our oh look inspector equal to 
it gets get inspector. So it's simply a property. So we're getting this little section right here. It's an object. And keep in mind too, I'm using this within the with statement. So I can set object variables within a with statement. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. So all this one is getting is we're getting the active inspector of our email. And then from there, we're going to get the word editor from our particular, um, what is it, our inspector. And so what we're going to say is the actual, what is it, what did I declare it as? Oh, look, doc. Okay. And so we're going to say it is the Outlook inspector and then the word editor. So this is kind of like our word document if you think about it. It's the actual um, document with inside our email, that little section where it's all the, the information in there. So that's how, kind of how we think about that one. And then from there, now we're going to start working with the actual range within our particular um, document if you think about it. So we have to define a range and then we're going to paste the object within the particular range that we define. So define a range and then paste, well, I guess it's not, well, define the range. We want to paste the chart in. Okay. So we're going to set the outlook range equal to the olook Doc. So we're going in the Word document, we're going in the application property, into the active document property, and then to the content. So this is actual all, all the content within our document. And then we're going to define that as our range. And then from there, we're going to take that range that we've now defined, we're going to insert after that range, a space, and then a VB new line. So a new line, a new line break. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually collapse that selection because sometimes it likes to collapse it after we've uh, inserted a new line. Well, not collapse, but it likes to select everything. And so we want to select it to the last section of our range. And so this is how we do that. It's weird. Sometimes I haven't had this happen, but other times it does. I guess this, again, just one of those stability issues that can come up and then leave randomly, but we'll do it just to be safe. So all I'm doing is I'm just collapsing it down to the end of our particular uh, range selection, that's all. And then, now that we've technically copied our chart, we can paste it, so paste the chart in the email. And so I'm gonna say, oh, look, range, dot paste. And it's as simple as that. So if I run it now, everything should work smoothly. At least that's hopefully what we can hope for. <laughs> Perfect. Great. So it created the email. It put our little body section here and then it copied our chart over into the email. So just like we wanted. So that does it for today's video. If you got any questions about how to take a single chart and you know, kind of starting to explore Outlook and that whole object model, please put those questions down in the comments below. Also, you, if you could make sure to like the video, we always appreciate the support. And then also, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we continue on in this series and other series. So in our next video, we're going to start looking at how we take multiple charts, um, and then we're going to move to Excel tables and Excel ranges. And then we'll go into some more complicated stuff about, you know, formatting and all that kind of fun stuff. But yeah, that's going to be all interesting stuff because it's a little bit more complicated than what we've done necessarily in the past. But uh, thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.